before we took that break, Doctor, you were looking to more like make your thoughts or an urge to the federal government to intervene in the situation in river states owing to the concerns on the oil outputs. You could pick it up from there. Right. I think uh, it's very, very important that uh, the president and the leadership of the country take cognizance of what is ha happening. Because if you allow this to continue, it can actually affect the entire uh, nation. Because if you look at it, it's quite political, but it's affecting the uh, the political landscape of, of Nigeria. But let's come to the governor and the uh, the godfather and the, how do you call it? The godson. The godson. It's quite uh, interesting. Because I listened to two of them back and forth uh, some days uh, back, and I discovered that I think the major issue is still political contention. It's the stronghold that everybody wants to take advantage of. But I think president needs to come on board now because the VK is a minister under the president. Then uh, a serving governor under the president too is uh, Fubara, Fubara. So I think there is need for them to come together to have a round table discussion and move forward. If not, this will continue because if you look at what is happening, to have a kind of arson, coordinated attack, and that level for three local governments is a serious issue. And it's also a, a, a I mean, another national dimension in, in terms of Nigerian uh, police. I think that's what is much more uh, surprising. Now, police don't go to live. Police don't have a break time. Police must be working 247. Be it election, be it there is no election. So if you decide to withdraw from election, does that mean you withdraw from securing the state? Because it is when police now withdraw the police uh, from the local government that the arsonists now have the opportunity to actually attack the uh, the, 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 the the local government. And it's quite sad that that level of destruction can can happen. We are even lucky that there is no much casualty. But after according to what we are hearing, we are still likely to hear from them. But it's a serious issue that Nigerian police should not be a tools. In the, in the hands, hands of, of politi political, political actors. actors. Now, how, how important, or would I call it, how significant is this reshuffling we're seeing? The former River State Police Commissioner, Olutunji Dusu, has been redeployed out of rivers. We now have a new CP in place. Does this have some significance? Because we hear the new CP is a no-nonsense man. Right, when you say no-nonsense man, it depends on his own uh, body language as well. But I think I agree that there should be change of, uh, of batting for... A police commissioner simply because you know when you are in in, in an environment and there's serious problem you cannot address it the best thing is to change i think that's a good from the from the ig but i also would like to also talk to the ig uh in my own little way because the ig is saying that the the uh, governor is trying to have an unfair comment on nigeria uh, i think the ig also should live up to expectation because you know when you are police you're not police of a particular uh, people particular political party you're a police of nigerian that is why it is called what the nigerian police just to be, to be securing people two four seven to stop mayhem so i think with this new cp they call it no nonsense let's see how things unveil uh, over time but what we want is very very decisive action i have listened to anonu gas well who said president said uh, you know and they are mentioning fubara i think they should also mention wiki you know it's a two-way thing because i listened to wiki yesterday and there was a question that arose that said okay what do you think is the solution i recall the governor said where well, he want peace he was in my guy on top he, want he had peace. actually said he has also knelt down not Nel once not, not twice, twice. now when they were asking the the uh wiki himself was saying you know, for what kneel down for what they should ask him why he knelt down then he's also now saying that no he doesn't have issue that he should follow the rule of law so um, what is what do you mean by rule of law? and also another thing we need to look at you know our court is becoming a court of uh, you know where people just go to get an injunction get what they want get judgment i think our judiciary also need to you know stay up to expectations so there will not be conflicting uh judge because one is in state high court one is in federal high court and they are of the same the same level so it becomes an, a serious issue i think nigerian police nigerian judiciary should always remain what they should be because if we see them taking partisan you know trying to tilt towards somebody the other person will feel they want to just take advantage of that uh, against them so i think it's a serious and the only person that can solve this thing he has Talk to them before the Mr. President. I think you need to do more. Now it's getting even more robust in the approach with many Nigerians lending their voice and calling on Mr. President to intervene. A former governorship candidate in the 2023 elections in River State, Mr. Tonya Cole, has also lent his voice, calling on President Bola Metinibu to wade in. But the challenge now is this is not the first time Mr. President has involved himself in River State. There was a peace pact signed in 2023, 
after the State House of Assembly was also brought ablaze and brought to rubbles. Now, and this is almost like the fourth time Mr. President is being asked by well many Nigerians to wade into the situation. But what would you think Mr. President would do differently? Well, let's critical his historical perspective to even reverse state crisis. If you recall that, the same thing happened during Amici. Amici was a minister under President Muhammadu Buhari, while Wiki was a, a governor. Amici was, uh, Amici was so good there with you know, federal paraphernalia, especially in Nigeria, I mean, when it's coming and what have you, the same thing is actually happened. But then it was an opposition, you know, party. But now it was, uh, uh, after all, uh, Wiki has not denounced uh, our PDP. He's only say that he's the one leg and one leg in, and we have PDP governor. But the thing is, you could see that there's a there's the kind of might that the Wiki is using. Antonio is a good stakeholder. You know, he's a very uh, stakeholder there because he was APC, Candidate. candidate. Wife of Vara was a PDP, PDP uh, candidate. And from what he said, he listened very well. He still, they don't still follow on the Mr. Uh, president. But you recall that even Wiki is taking advantage of the uh, slots that is supposed to be for APC. Because if you ask me, people at Toyoko, we were thinking that because he lost out, he should have been considered as a minister or as a, any political, uh, you know. But we see that there's not, and we could all, also notice that Amechi is on silent. So it simply means it is now Wiki that is determining what actually happens. And the only person that can call Wiki to other, honestly, because most elders have intervened, it doesn't make any sense. I think it's just two persons, uh, President uh, Jonathan, former president of Nigeria, can call him to other, because actually they, I'm, I, I'm sure they also support him to make him the uh, president, you know, I mean the governor of that state, and also Mr. President, uh, President Bola Meritin. They need to call him to, you know why? Because if this carnage continue in that state, it's going to have a serious negative implication. I also want to remind President Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu, what causes uh, President uh, uh, Jonathan loss was his issue with Amechi in reverse. That's what cost him second term. So it's good that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu should learn from that now, that if you continue to support or to continue to see Wiki, do what he's doing. If PDP is a strong, it, it, is not now an organized party, I think it's an advantage for them because you cannot have a state like Port Harcourt in Nigeria that, and you say you don't have political power. It's a strong political uh, household that you need to, stronghold that you need to take advantage. So, president should not trade off that state because if you continue to, do, if we can continue like this, it will get to a point, even Nigeria will say no, this is good because from the look of things now, people that are causing this mayhem either sent by Wiki or not, they are Wiki supporters. Because according to him, when we even listened to him, he said, did I tell them to go and do it? They could be my supporter, but I didn't tell them to go and cause such uh, mayhem. So I think there is need for them to come together. And if you look, also look at it historically, what brought about this problem? The local government, their tenure have expired. And the governor said there should be election. And the federal government also conditioned that if you don't have substance, uh, uh, substantive uh, local government chairman, you cannot assess within 90 days. We, we cannot assess fund, which we end by end of October. So, and the governor said, no, we cannot, you know, have a hand, you know, we cannot hold our hand. We need to assess this fund to uh, function in the state. And he said, we must go on. Then APC said they will not con uh, contest. There's some people go, go to court. Then, if you, then people are also saying that why should Fubara supported uh, APP. He now said, no, uh, my people say they are not uh, going to involve. You know, they also said why Bala Mohamed came to, but it's politics. Everybody wants to, you know, it's a powerful, it's power struggle. So everybody wants way to be very, very easy. For, for me, I think they're making it more difficult for Fubara, if you ask me, because if I saw you, uh, you are the architect of his coming to be uh, governor, there's a level at which you also allow him to breathe. Because if you allow him to breathe, you will not see reason to also come, come to. So for me, if you ask me, I think uh, uh, Wike is not, uh, is not looking at political solution. He's looking at a way to even remove the, the governor, the if you ask me. That's what I just think. Now, the governor has taken some steps. Would they carry weight? The first step he has taken is to constitute a seven-man uh, pa justice panel. That has been one of the first steps he has taken. Right. Uh, the other step he has taken is appeal to reverse people. More like publicly saying, my hand is not one that has been seen to be violent. I'm always one for peace. The persons who are doing this are crippling the states, burning critical infrastructures. How do you think, how do you think this, those two steps he has taken would shape up going into the future? 
Well, I agree with him that it should be a piece. Uh, you know, it's not. There's a way you call it that will make find fact finding committee on. Do, I think it's good they bring those people that are born that place to justice. It's very very important because if you don't bring them to justice, this kind of thing will continue. Remember, about one year ago, the same thing also happened. So I think this is committee that is as no greater. Let them do their fine and he give them timeline. I think he gave them just thirty days to make sure they do the findings and give the report. Because if you don't do the report and make five fact finding, that thing is too big not to, you know, to look for findings. Because it's a coordinated attack. Who said they should go ahead? Why do you have to, you know, burn three local government at the same time? You know, that means it's a planned attack. So such people should be bring to, to book. Because it, there is no way you could, the money that you're supposed to expend on the governance or on the betterment of the citizen, you're going to use it again to fix the local government. So who is that they lost? It is the state's uh, citizen. And that's why he's also appealing to the citizen that, look at me, I'm ready to uh, give you good governance, but it, it's been truncated by this type of, uh, you know, uh, arsonist and a lot of uh, uh, mayhem around it. And I can tell you, this may not be the end of what we are going to see. Because if these people are not tamed and not bring to book, such thing will still continue. Now, this is one of the prominent issues in the news this morning. But moving away from this, another burning issue in the news is a lawsuit as filed by 15 states that have now joined Kogi states. And they're looking for the Supreme Court to hear the matter on the 22nd of October as it concerns the anti-graft agency, EFCC. In keeping with its act, they're also calling for a probe of the mismanagement of funds. Now, in one of the papers this morning, the Nation newspaper... Uh, much like looking at it from the angle of the states other than the EFCC, are uh, saying that the judgment is looking to bar EFCC, the NFIU, from probing accounts of states. Now, the states are pointing fingers at the EFCC. The EFCC is pointing back. The Supreme Court, again, back to your comment of what our judicial system is being reduced to. Uh, how do we go about this issue? It's a serious issue because uh, I think it's Oluka that first mentioning that a lot of states are making it difficult for them to operate uh, their, uh, their, their, their activities. And it's a serious issue because, you know, if you recall the AIA case, AIA even has got a, a court order before even finished tenure that they should not be able to prove. So I think every state is looking at a way to really secure their own uh, part. And that's why we need a professional EFCC. You know, when you are probing cases, you know that this case is actually not vendetta or a kind of uh, you are trying to you know do political uh, gimmicks with uh, in support of other or in cahoots with other people make sure that you are professional if you are professional in what you are doing even though they take you to court the court will still be uh, behind you but in the case whereby about 15 states that's a that's more than quarter of the that's close to half yes or, or close to half of it so they are now saying no don't come and uh probe us don't check our account don't do this it's a serious issue i think maybe it's also a bad thing for governor to be able to, you know, since governor have uh, what we call immunity, you have immunity until you finish your tenure. So there is no need for you to also go for that. So I think governor also should need to be cautioned. Why will you say they shouldn't check your, your record? He, he, they should check your record. You should be accountable for whatever uh, you, you actually expend. So I think it's a bad thing for governors to act activate that. But it's a good thing for EFC also to be professionalized. It's very, very key. Now, there's a case of EFCC being unconstitutional, which is another case that uh, the state governors are filing. And, and many are looking at it from the angle of why the state governors in this quest. Is it though owing to their immunity after office, which is a concern? Uh, because whilst they're in office, most of the activities uh, as it concerns uh, financial misappropriation or outright fraud, like it's called, is sh shielded by this immunity. But after office... Whilst they have successors who have allegiance to them, like in Kogi State, it almost feels as though that immunity stays for a lifetime. Right. I, the, the fact remains that if you look at uh, our governors, please, how many governors will not have EFCC case after his governance? It's a very serious. I'm not sure there are more than three. You know, in the past, because most of them will have one case of mismanagement or or death. So having seen that, they now discover that if they don't claim EFCC. Yes. Is going to come for for them uh, as well, and I I think it's not good for Nigeria because any once you are, have position of responsibility, you should be able to account for it. And because there is the existence of EFCC and there is chance of you being called to come and account for what you have expended, it makes them to also perform uh, better. So for me, I think the government are progressing in a wrong in in, in an error 
for them to have actually is, uh, initiated that uh, that thing that that the FCC is not constitutional. I think that is uh, it, it is just afterthought uh, for them. So for me, the only thing I will appeal to FCC because uh, since we look at how they become uh, FCC chairman, we've been seeing a lot of things that I uh, you know. Uh, that be, and he has a, is an experienced person because he has been the secretary of AFCC. A lot of uh, you know, you actually work with about since inception. He has been he has been there, so we expect him to be more professional. Then you also need presidential uh, backing because it's very very key. I think he report to the president directly. So it's very very so the president also needs to come in and say no, governors. There is need for you to be accountable after you know you just play your role. If you play your role very well and you don't have a uh, in the skeleton, your cupboard. <laughs> cupboard, you will have reason to not to face them, and you know, you come out of it. A lot of governors have faced them and they're out of it, so uh, it's not a big deal for you to actually uh, face them. Now, it's also important to note that besides the EFCC, the suit also mentions the NFIU. Yes, now, and whilst they are pointing to the constitution, saying the 1999 constitution has some conditionalities where it does not accommodate the establishment of the EFCC outrightly. What about the NFIU? Well, if you look at NFI, you know, you know it was uh, later they actually initiated uh, NFI. And NFI is under the Nigerian police. I think it's under the Nigerian police. So I think it's an investigative um, and an anti graft organization. So if it's not there, and National Assembly should work on it and make it constitutional. As simple as that, but we need them to be functional. Because you know why? NFI, you monitor money that passed through the account much more than even EFCC. Yes. So EFCC also rely on. NFIU to an exit. So if they want to like tame the two, so that the two will not be able to actually prove them. But I think we need anti-graft. It's very, very important in Nigeria. Now, Dr. Ali has reiterated the need for an anti-graft agency, be it the EFCC or a unit under the Nigerian Police Force, NFIU, to probe issues surrounding mismanagement of public funds. But whilst the Supreme Court has fixed October 22nd as the day to hear the suit, as instituted by 16 states on the constitutionality for the establishment of the EFCC. The Guardian newspaper earlier looked at the issue of development commissions, which President Bola Metinibu, in his magnanimity, owing to the yearnings from different regions, has decided to prioritize. There is a concern by the editorial headline on The Guardian on the priority of funds, which reads, anxiety as FG commits states' funds to special development commissions. There's also a map with the infographics. In H1 2024, 7.09 trillion naira was made available to federating entities. States' IGR is about 40% of FAC allocations. Like the NDDC, the regional commissions may have to draw 15% of total monthly allocation of the region member states of the commission from the federation account with a bite of ecological windfall and budget from key oil and maritime companies operating in the region in addition to other sources such as grants now this infographics draws the question as to the prioritization of this improved allocation to states vis-a-vis -vis the development commissions that are now becoming more lucrative we've seen every region now yearning for a development commission of its own many are saying the president is tilting towards inclusivity and federal character principle but the challenge is with its budgetary implications as an economist how do you see the situation as it unravels right i think uh, it's it's quite uh, funny at this point in time that every and that is politics you know politics is the act of trying to attract something to yourself beyond other persons or you want to take your own share as well and that's what is playing out if you look at all this commission some states the reason for commission is just because of emergency and that's why we have nddc and this is just to make sure they manage the state that have the resources and make sure they give development to that state but now you see northeast you see northwest you see south south and south is also agitating for a commission i think it's uncalled for because it's much more of duplication of activity in as much as we have each state managing their own uh, fund so why do i will going back to regional uh, government. government because that's what it appear appear to because if you are going for regional government you know it's regional but you are having regional, you know, commissions, you know, and it is serious issue. And because of politicalization of that 
uh, region. Because when they give to Northwest, I know other people will ask for it. Northeast is even accepted because of the Boko Haram and the volatility of the issue. But we also have volatile issues in the Northwest. But for me, I think you should have channeled this thing to states. You know, state will handle their own problem, not giving it to to because even under the region there will be contestation on which state should the fund actually goes go to. to. Because if you give one trillion to maybe North East, you know, North East have about seven, six states. So each state will be looking for you know there will be political you know you know there will be serious justly uh, justly you know everybody wants to get uh, what uh, what for for them. It, at, for me, I think it's not good because if you continue to, to in that in that direction. All these geopolitical zones, we we'll also be looking at how much do you give a how about meanwhile some have some peculiar issues that demand that and that's why now people if you look at it in the national assembly I listen to the argument some are saying why are you having once you once you have NDDC why are you having not I mean South South Commission again some now argue that some states are not in South South but they are under NDDC state like Ondo, Kogi, you know, they are, they are especially with the discovery of oil in some mm. northern states exactly. now, Middle exactly. States. Exactly. So things are now changing. So for me, bringing a bar commission is going to take our money more because you know why? Most people that are going to employ in the region, should I call it? Yes, regional commission now. Mm -hmm. They are going to employ them. They are going to pay them. They are going to have offices. You have to service all everything around them. But if it's state, state will just collect directly and implement immediately. I remember we still have senators from those states that will still be looking for a constituency and allocation. Allowance. Allocation for their constituency. Uh, as of them, will also be jostling for, for their own. So I think we are going to be taking too much from the from the account and it will be going for people's money better than development itself. So for me, states should continue to get the fund, not having all this uh, commission. Now, now, it's a matter before the National Assembly. Do you think the National Assembly would have the willpower to either stand it down, step it down, or find a balance in the middle? Well, I think they will not be able to step it down, I can tell you, because, you know, all of them are representing their own states, and everybody wants their state to, or their region to, to benefit. The only thing is that it will, in the long run, every every region will now have their own what? Their own commission. commission. Wow. This would also take a toll on the cost of governance in this state and by wide implication, it is a matter in which Dr. Aliu says rests on the shoulders of the People's Parliament. How would the National Assembly decide going forward? Now, now back to another major issue and with its economic implications, uh, strategic steps we're seeing this morning as it concerns supporting the Dangote refinery to grow. We hear this morning that the aviation industry in Nigeria has chosen to prioritize buying its Jet A1 fuel from Dangote Refinery alone. Dangote has also raised the alarm of the imports of refined petroleum products heating 3 million barrels per day in Nigeria, despite local production being around the margins of 3.4 million. Now, two papers that earlier reported on how Nigeria can improve its next exporter credibility and also prioritize selling directly to marketers in Nigeria. Now, it's about a balance of trade. And in this perspective, what are you making of some of this, uh, what I call them, policies? Are they policies? We have a serious issue in terms of uh, our, our, our energy problem, especially uh, PMS. You know, it's a good thing for uh, Festus Kiyamo, led by, I mean, federal government, buying everything from Dangote. What a good gesture. We are going to have issue now. I can tell you that we should be expecting our fuel price to increase to around 1,000 to 1,300. Is this owing to monopoly or why? Because now, if Dangote now sell directly to the marketers, is a problem. And why is it a problem? Recall that Dangote selling to NPC does not just come like that. It was a decision that is strategic. It's because Dangote would like to sell at global price. Which is hovering around 1,200 now. So if that would now sell to Fragon, government, Fragon government will now find a way to reduce it at which we can buy it at 1,000. So if now allow marketers to go to Dangote now, Dangote will sell it to them at global price. They will also sell it to us at global price. So we should be expecting an increase in the price of PMS if our NNPC hands off. Now, now let's now go back to NNPC. NNPC is also putting us to this problem. 
if our refinery is working, which is our local refinery in Port Harcourt, it would have bring a serious competition to Dangote now, that we can even have the price as low as 700, 800. Because Dangote is also aware that if he's not selling to Nigeria, he's not going to also break even because you have to transport it, you know, they have to come. So I think the major thing we will appeal to federal government is make sure our own refinery is working. Because if you are not competing with Dangote, you have given room for monopoly. So that would be sole decision maker of how much Nigerians will buy the PMS. PMS. And it's a serious issue for Nigeria uh, as an oil producing country. Now, that would also make one alarm, uh, one, uh, how do I call it, very dangerous statement. It said, federal government have no investment in Dangote refinery. That's quite challenging. And you recall, we said it will start, they will start supplying him October 1st with uh, Naira. And we are expecting him to also sell to us in Naira. Naira. So we are expecting all this thing to make meaning and let the citizen benefit in terms of buying it at low price. But I can tell you, if you don't compete with Dangote, if you don't have your refinery working competing with Dangote, we are going to be buying it at an increasing price. Because Dangote is a businessman who wants to also break even. And maximize profit. Maximize profit. That is even his aim. Not even breaking even to maximize profit. We also know that he actually, according to him, borrowed some money. <laughs> to also uh, fix the refinery, so you need to recoup his money. But government have the onus to make sure they compete with Dangote. Because if we leave Dangote alone, we've seen what happened in the cement industry. Up to now, we see how much we are buying a bag of cement. So I think government need to compete with Dangote. Dangote. With a, or if you know you cannot manage this, why not sell it to private sectors? So if you have two private sector operating, maybe worry and they can now come and compete with uh, Dangote effectively, which is a good one. But if you leave it to only Dangote, we are, are here for another challenge. Now, there's also the challenge of our crude back loans, another deal which we also saw the NMPC looking to repay outstanding using our crude. What does this imply for our crude oil output? Well, I, I think uh, from time memory, okay, let's say Fort Republic, we've been using that style whereby we sell our crude for an exchange. So I think it's normal thing. But my only challenge is that, and that's why I have issue with Billy Kiari. Billy Kiari should have focused and see all these things coming. But you do not work on it because you also work with uh, President uh, Muhammad Buhari, and you know there will be life after President Muhammad Buhari government. You should have calculated and now, not now that you are now, you know, get money and you are giving out. Uh, out crude, but no matter what, sir, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that philosophy. Simply because we are oil producing country, I can tell you, we are not even meeting up OPEC quota. quota. So if we are meeting up OPEC quota, we won't have this level of issues. Then you can also develop another way of supplying Dangote cement separately. So if we can meet our quota and develop and look for another, you know, open another rig and what have you to actually supply that, that would have solved the problem. So I still think. We do it appears the NNPCL is not getting how to manage this very, very well. And, and I should blame Melikari. Develop other strategy. Don't be just to you know relax. You have to look for new solutions to uh, to meet up the new uh, challenges that we are having. So I think we should hold them responsible. And consequently, uh, I, I mean, surprisingly, our president is the minister of uh, petroleum. Uh, petroleum, who we expect that with his own direction, there should be an action on how to improve, increase our. Uh, because we hear less about oil thefts now. You know, when they came, when uh, Mili Kiari came, I recall that I was trying to actually make sure that, you know, they fight oil thefts. We have also engaged private, you know, uh, com security companies to protect our oil uh, pipeline. So I think we should have moved beyond where we are now. Now, whilst this is also another economic issue with splashed across the front page of the business day, and it's with... Uh... The report that foreign investments in Nigeria's stock is up by 204% in the second quarter of this year. Now, many are looking at it at a time when we have some indicators. Uh, yes, uh, let's look at the business day together. It was quite a challenging uh, revelation when I looked at it. I was, how is it up by 204% in Q2? Whilst we're told that portfolio investments has also risen by 360%. The business day had this as the headline earlier. Let's look at it together. Foreign investments in Nigeria's stock up 204% in Q2. Portfolio investments rise 360% to $3.5 billion in H1. Investments growth 
linked to high yield environment reforms. From uh, a non economist perspective, when I looked at this headline on the business day, I was wondering is it what is the stock market? Right. I, I, th I think what they're trying to say is that yeah. foreign direct investment generally is low. Yes, we don't have capital inflow into Nigeria, but they are now saying that we have much more portfolio investment than what foreign direct investment, investment. which is not which is which is not good. Why is it not good? Is that you know when you say portfolio investment, some, it simply means people that invest in stock, you know something that cannot really translate to direct uh, investment. But meanwhile, foreign direct investment simply means companies coming to Nigeria bring their money, bring their physical structure and invest it. So we are having challenges in what? In foreign direct investment. So capital inflow to Nigeria is getting reduced. And what is the problem? It's just the MPR. You know, MPR simply means the interest rate. So I cannot come to a country whereby there's a serious policy, some and sort, whereby if I borrow money in the bank, I'll be paying 35 percent i know every every businessman is shrewd so it's, it's easy for you to invest in treasury bill you know in all those things that you think you can easily convert your your money and it, you won't have to spend so anything physical so people that are bringing direct investments such as industry companies i can tell you since president bola mention will become president i don't think there's any new company that comes well he went out every now and then to, to canvas, turn direct F to uh, canvas I FDI. FDI, but it's not actually working. So the main challenge is that it is our policy some and sort and our decisions. Because if you also look at it also, we're having a kish approach from CBA whereby, you know, growth is being sacrificed for, to bring about uh, downward uh, in inflation. So if you are bringing all this policy, companies will not come and invest in terms of bringing their fiscal infrastructure. We also saw a circular talking about the CBN assuring the public on financial system stability and safety of funds. It almost feels as though a lot of Nigerians are getting skeptical with the way some banks are approaching changes to their technology as well. Uh, on the back end, feedback from most Nigerians on social media, they were complaining about difficulty accessing right. certain networks on bank. Right. Uh, do you have any information as to what is happening there? Well, uh, according to what they say, there's a particular bank that had serious issue. He was talking about network upgrade because I also received the message I used that bank. They're saying they are doing upgrade, but it's becoming so difficult and con So I think CBN needs to uh, look into that. But the, the fact remains that if you look at our banks, honestly, they are feeding fat in this uh period and you know they're now seeing a lot of profits a lot of profit they are, that's what they are feeding for they are not a lot of profit but i think it's because of that portfolio investment you know that's if you look at it even bank receive more of it if you look at that mbs uh, report banks is enjoying more of it but it's not a problem but they need to do more in terms of infrastructure because we also have infrastructure probably you can't be in that sector and not invest in your infrastructure so i think uh cbn need to look into those banks and instruct them to invest in their infrastructure. But there's a rivalry that's also going on. Uh, there's, a, there's an increment in the charges we receive as users. And the charges, according to one of the banks, when we try to question them, that why are you removing so, so, so humongous amounts from our USSD uh, usage? And I said, no, please kindly use other alternatives like our app because we don't have direct rights over what is deducted from your money. So telecos, telecoms are the one deducting the Those money. The service charges. The service charge, not the bank. That's a serious issue. And it's getting much more increased. So It's almost like it's, uh, an issue of multiple taxation. Exactly. You know, that's not even the issue, but it's getting higher. Meanwhile, the control of that is not under CBN. It's under NCC. You know, the, you, know you cannot use any bank app without using the telecos. You know, you cannot use SSD without using the telecos. So the telecos are bringing up that charges, and banks is telling, no, we don't have control over, over the charges. Talk, talking about control, now that you mentioned it, I just recalled, because I also saw a, a certain foreign network provider, I don't want to name the name, they also issued notices to their customers that they will be hiking up their tariff going to the end of this month. And Nigerians, again, are calling on the NCC to somewhat step in as the regulator, but we're yet to see any press statement from the NCC. Well, to be, to be candid, you know, if you look at the telecos, I think they offer more service. And if you ask me, I will support them now because everything is being increased, the diesel, the price, everything. But they have not increased their tariff. All we could do is that federal government should come into their aid, maybe overlook some taxes for them or give them some rebate, something that will make, make them to feel so that they will not increase this. If not, they will want to increase ordinarily.
Now, I'm also looking at some of the publications as to how this newspaper headline could have been better worded. The Daily Independent is putting it this way. It's saying capital importation drops by 23%. Uh, do you think that when it comes to reports on newspapers, some papers look to have the government's image at heart? And they put out headlines like this that make you wonder if we shouldn't have the latter as reported by the Daily Independent leading the if story. If you look at when, when I heard the headline, I was shocked that this is somehow contradicting to... But the thing is, it depends on the world. That you know, sometimes we, you journalists are very good <laughs> that you, you want us to read. So sometimes we don't look at the headlines only. You have to go and read the body of the story. Of the, of the story. I, I think that's first paper. We need to look at the body of the story to really get the headline. But I, I can tell you that's why some papers are exceptional. You know, Guardian, you know, look at their, you know, because the headline matters most. So I think what they are trying to do, they want to attract people to read it more. But I will go with Daily Independent heading. It's much more worded compared to the other one. Well, Doctor, I must thank you for taking our time to look at issues of the economy, political issues, social economic issues, all in a bid to prefer solutions. And I'm hoping that the authorities concerned will take a cue from some of the brilliant suggestions you have brought to the table this morning. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me.